I'm Justin and I'm going to be going over AD and uh, how you can own it using management software and so uh, we'll get started here. So introduction, it's going to pretty much, it's going to go over isolation and how you need to isolate AD from everything else and, uh, and, and the management that, um, uh, the management environment of, act of AD and um, how it's handled and so I'm specifically going to be looking at SCOM, HPI low and Hyper-V and how they, how they can be used to own AD essentially. And there's no vulnerabilities, we're just going to look at how it's abused if they're not managed right essentially and not configured properly. So uh, the software used to manage the domain controllers is often um, uh, overlooked and as you know it handles all Windows auth um, and it handles all the hashes which um, if you're after an environment you want to get all the hashes because once you get all the hashes you can own any box in the domain and so uh, so yeah. It's the, cr the crown jewels of the environments and recommendations usually look at uh, ID seg and so they only look at um, active directory and the OS level you know ID seg and they don't look at everything that interacts with active directory. Um, and so and so background I'm going to go over SCOM which is used for monitoring and of course if it's a high valued asset you want to monitor it right and so you're going to use some sort of monitoring and uh, in this instance we're going to look at SCOM. Uh, there's a SCOM security guide that uh, is available on the internet. It's really long. Nobody probably read it. They probably just hit next, next, next. And, uh, and there's also out of band management devices, so, um, uh, which is uh, network level, network devices that allow out of band management. So if you, the machine is off, then you can restart it up. Uh, it's used for imaging, uh, et cetera. And so we're going to look at HPI low in this instance. Um, and then Hyper-V as well so um, if you host, a, which Hyper-V is a virtualization and so if you host AD on a Hyper-V host um, then you also need to um, look at the Hyper-V host and there's warnings online about it that, but it's often overlooked and everybody ignores the host and only looks at the OS level, you know, ID seg, right? And so first we'll look at SCOM and uh, it's used for monitoring and, and alerting of health and uh, uh, the SCOM SDK service is what it uses to interact with the agents and everything um, and it's opened up on uh, 5723 and 5724 is what it uses and uh, these are required, these, these need to be open if you want to um, access the SCOM management, like if you actually want to look at the alerts and everything, these have to be open and so oftentimes organizations have these open in the firewall in order to, to look at alerts and everything out of the environment because they want to act upon them, right? Uh, and then InMap, for instance, won't scan for these. So if you use InMap, um, then you'll need to add these to the list, and you'll see why in a minute. And the SCOM agent as well, which runs on every managed, every monitored machine, um, it runs as local system, and so uh, it's great because you know it's admin access. So if you, yeah, you'll see in a minute. So abusing, abusing the functionality of SCOM. So SCOM has this beautiful feature called Task. And they let you run arbitrary VB script on every monitored or every monitored machine. And so, um, obviously, if you can own the SCOM app, app or the machine, then you can run arbitrary script as local system on every managed machine. And um, let's see, and then you have to be a member of the SCOM administrators or authors role, which is application level roles within SCOM, um, and you're able to then run these, obviously. And so, uh, so if you have a SCOM instance, then you need to have another instance that only monitors AD, and then one instance that monitors everything else. So obviously, they need to be isolated. That's you know, the whole goal here. So here's an overview of the arch architecture, which was on MSDN or one. Yeah, but anyway, so it uses the SDK, which then uh, executes on the root management server, and um, and then that runs the script on the agent managed machines. Um, and it usually runs as whatever the agent is running as and by default it runs as local system which I already mentioned. And so uh, they have an operations manager console as well um, and that uses the, the SDK as well. But you can also use their libraries that they have as well. And so here's just a screenshot of uh, the installation and as you can see um, by default it runs as local system. And there's many warnings out there on the internet that it can be very dangerous and it's bad but nobody reads them of course so 
we're going to abuse it. So demo time. Hopefully this is showing here. So we got a few demos. Is it showing? Okay. Yeah, it's already at ten twenty four. Okay, not demo time. The demo gods are not with me today. All right, there we go. We have something. Now it's only on that screen, so I gotta look down at the. All right, well. Okay, cool. All right, so pretty much here's the SCOM um, operations manager. So we're gonna use it to auth using a low privileged account. And um, that's in the SCOM administrator's role because that's the way it was added and that's usually how it's added. And so uh, the SCOM console lists all monitored machines. In this example, one machine is a domain controller. Uh, our new SCOM, um, we're gonna, what we're gonna execute is going to execute a reverse HTTPS shell and the VB script is written out to hard disk and then executed in the SCOM task. So as you can see there, we're just running uh, arbitrary PowerShell and then running the script that's gonna start our reverse shell. So we'll copy that, create a new SCOM task under the authoring. And so next, yeah, we'll just call it meterpreter. And you can hide the name if you're, you know, gonna be sneaky. And, and then we're, we wanna run it on all Windows computers. And so increase the timeout value to half an hour. That way we have plenty to migrate into another process. And then, so we create the task. And so this SCOM SD, so the actual user who's executing that has access into this is, uh, it only has access on the SCOM machine and it's, so obviously it's not an admin on an AD. So, and then so we're gonna run the task. So we ran them against each of the machines. One's a domain controller and you see we got the shells back. <laughs> and so it runs as local system and so uh, we're just going to open a session on the, do on the domain controller. We get the, we'll just, yeah, we migrate, yeah. Only we're not migrating yet. So yeah, it runs as local system by default. And then we're just going to list the processes, migrate it into spooler because after half an hour it'll end because that's what we have our execution as. It'll, so you wanna hurry up and migrate and then. And we migrate processes, empty the hashes, end of story. All right, all right, there we go. There you go, there's the hashes and now we've owned that, that domain. And then you can also do it, you can also write arbitrary exes. Uh, you could also write a reverse shell in VB script as well, um, which works, there's. And so in this instance, we're just going to write an arbitrary exe. So I'll skip ahead to, well, I also mentioned here, so here's the SCOM administrators and as you see, there's the SCOM SDK users that uh, is, is admins in the SCOM app and not, you know, not in AD, obviously. And so, so if you're an admin in the SCOM app, then you're essentially, you know, an admin. On the DC. And so we just create another one here and it's pretty much the same thing. I'll skip through it. 
except it's writing out an arbitrary exe and then executing it. And yeah, it runs it. And you can run this across however many machines there are. So it'll, it'll spin up an instance on every agent or in every agent. So. And then it just runs and empties the hashes out, obviously. So. And one last example here that I had was um, the scum. So port 5724 is used by the scum SDK, and the operations manager uses uh, 5723. Five, and so if that's not open, but 572 who four is open, then you can still use the SDK libraries that they have and, um, uh, and you can execute everything using that as well. You just have to implement it on your own. And so in this example, we're going to import a new management pack. Oops. And it's just going to run arbitrary commands. And this is just a little app that I wrote that uses the SDK. Really shitty app, but it works. And so it imports the management. And then, yeah, you'll just see you kind of have a interactive, you know, you can execute whatever you want against it. And so just another example. All right, we'll move on. So recommendations here. Let me switch this back. Okay, I'll just move on. So recommendations is that the SCOM servers used to monitor AD need to be isolated uh, and not to allow SCOM SDK ports open. So if they are, they need to be closed off. SCOM administrators and authors um, should be limited to only the admins, obviously. Uh, so you'll need another instance that only monitors AD. Uh, move engineers and everybody else into the read-only or operator roles, and that won't allow them to uh, execute new Agent and uh, also to reduce the agent as well, so it doesn't need to run as local system. And there's a official security guide too that you can read. Go over. Mm -hmm. My bad. All right, so for evasion, um, so SCOM tasks all need to be audited, obviously. That way if there's any, if there's any hidden task in there, they need to be audited. Um, so it also has the execution logs um, in SCOM. And by default, it's one week. And so, but you can edit that, so, which is really good if you want to increase it or if you're the bad guy and you want to remove the execution logs, you can also edit it. Um, and then it also logs every auth in the operations manager, operations manager event log. And so here's just a screenshot of the history. And so you can obviously edit it to be zero days and then nobody will know what ran. Or you can edit it for one month and if you want to audit. All right, so next we're going to go over out-of-band management devices. And um, every machine usually has out-of-band management hardware used for monitoring and maintenance. And so it's used for imaging, um, uh, for restarting, if you run out of hard disk space, et cetera, et cetera. It's for emergencies, essentially. Um, and so the admin in interface is usually accessed over H, or it's over SSL, SSH or IPMI, HTTPS as well. Um, and it's equivalent to actually having the actual box, like in your office, in your hands, right? So, um, and many of them that, well, all except for HP have really shitty default passwords. And so most of the time, Organizations might not update those, and so you can use that as access. And there's also, about a month ago, uh, Rapid7 released some really nice r remote root exploits that allow, um, that allow admin access without auth, and so that's really useful now as well. So, um, and they're, uh, uh, they're often um, hard to update because you have to, uh, it's usually very manual, and so organizations might not update them. And there's, uh, here's an example of HP ILO. They have an override switch that um, is actually on the actual 
machine and um, uh, if, it's, if it's enabled, then, it, um, then, then you don't have to auth at all. So um, it's, you know, it's awesome if you're after that machine. So here's a list of common usernames and ILO is the only one that is actually updated and all the rest of. So one more demo of Here, hang on, let me. Let me switch this back. Mouse isn't coming over. Give me one sec. It's not cooperating. There we go. So this is just this is HBILO here, and uh, what what's going to happen is we're going to mount an ISO. And we're going to start into Nopix and so, and then do sticky keys, and that's pretty much it. So, so you mount the ISO in the HBILO integrated remote. So, here, oops, let me skip back here. All right, so we, ma we mount the ISO here. Within the admin interface, uh, we start the machine up. And rather than making you watch it start up, I'll skip ahead here. So it starts into Nopix. And we sticky key the box. That way we can get access. So we're just going to replace the setc.exe with cmd.exe. And, and that's just one way of many to easy way to get access if you actually have access to the box. So we'll rename it cmd.exe paste except it doesn't. There. And then override it, restart the box. So we unmount the ISO, restart it back up, restart it back up, hit the shift key five times, and there you go. So obviously you guys know how it works. Do we hit the shift key five times and then we got a shell? I have system. Sorry. It's, it's nothing new. And then here you can just add another user or whatever you want, right? Empty the hashes, et cetera, et cetera. So we just add a user and then we get access to the box. Sticky keys off? No, it's not. All right, we'll move on here, running out of time. Okay, so recommendations, update the default password. Uh, it should always be updated, obviously. Um, have regular patching for the out-of-band out of devices. Uh, monitor audit logs for unauthorized access. Configure... Who factor auth if, if you're able to. Um, and you should also have a, another management environment f f you know, for all these out-of-band devices. 
Um, and there's an article online as well that you can read that helps with that. And so next we'll go over Hyper-V and it's just virtualization software that hosts virtual machines. Uh, administrator on the host is, has admin rights on all the VMs that it hosts obviously. Uh, so here's another example where you can also start into a, a live disk and steal the VHD file um, or either or I guess. And so here's just how you mount an ISO and then once you're in it you can steal the NTDS and so uh, and then you have all of Active Directory and you can extract the hashes offline essentially. And so all they'll know that is the machine unexpectedly restarted obviously unless they look at the host audit logs but. So recommendations, the Hyper-V, uh, uh, the Hyper-V host, they need to be isolated with AD exactly like everything else and the admins on it should only be admins. Um, so it's easy principle. Um, and also you need to protect the, the, protect the VHD files as well and so if, uh, so yeah, only admins should have access to those. And uh, it should also be in a, a another management network if available and there's another article on. And then lastly vulner vulnerability scanners as well. Uh, organizations usually do auth scanning and so those are, uh, and those usually have admin rights on every box and so if you're scanning your domain controller with a domain admin creds, the Nessus box or the Qualys box or whatever you're using should be treated as a domain controller. I mean it's, you know. Um, and so yeah, you can obviously, if you own one of those then you own AD as well if, if there isn't isolation. So conclusion is um, everything that interacts with AD needs to be looked at so management stuff also has to be properly secured and um, so that's about it and here's my, here's my information and I'll, ha I'll have everything up on, online next week. So 